Hey, I'm Dan Skinner from Recoup Health and Performance, and uh, today I'm going to show you a few things that you can do to loosen up your hips, loosen up your mid-back, and improve your posture. If you're a cyclist, you're going to love this. In any sport where we're going in a straight line, we tend to undervalue just how much um, rotation we're getting into our hips. We're really good at going back and forth, but to get the external and internal rotation, on a daily basis is so key to keeping healthy hips. So in this drill, we sit in a 90-90 position. Sit our chest up nice and strong, nice and tall. And from here, I'm gonna work external rotation on my left leg, internal rotation on my right. So I bring my chest up nice and tall, rotate over to my left knee. I'm gonna think, instead of folding my chest over like this, like you'd see in maybe a yoga pose, I'm gonna keep my chest nice and tall, and I'm gonna think about closing the pages of a book. My torso comes down to meet my knee, and I'm using a contraction from everything on the inside of my thigh, so I'm pulling myself deeper into the stretch. When you get down here, you'll feel a nice big stretch on the outside of your hip, and if you want, holding this for 30 to 60 seconds, following by an active push back up to return. So we're working active mobility versus passive mobility. When we're just stretching things, my body doesn't prioritize it as much as if I'm actually using my muscles to make that movement happen. So as I pull myself down into the stretch, I hold to make it a little harder. I can take my arms out to the side, squeeze, and get the rest of my body nice and tight, and I pulse myself up. For the second part, my back leg here is going to anchor into the ground, so my right knee presses down. My chest rotates over to this side, and already just by doing that, I'm getting a good amount of internal rotation into my right leg. What I can do to get a little bit more out of it, bring my chest tall, maybe I'll use my hand for a bit of a kickstand here, and I'm going to actively pull my right heel up off of the ground. You get a nice big contraction on the outside of your hip. You might even notice that there's a little bit of cramping. That cramping is totally fine, it goes away the more you do this drill. But driving that internal rotation is really, really important, especially in cycling because Typically our hips are a little bit wider than the way that we set up our pedals. So internal rotation is like a really important part of that pedal stroke. Doing this for again 30 seconds of just active stretch and then maybe a 10 second contraction, relax, a couple rounds like that, you'll have healthy hips. Now to get a little bit more motion back into our thoracic spine. So opening up our mid-back is really important because when we're cycling or running or sitting at a desk, we're spending so much time with our shoulders rolling forward and our back rounded. So we want to pay a little bit of that back. Think of this as like brushing your teeth for your back. So I'm going to get into a position where I've got my left foot in front, my right foot comes to the side, and my right hand creates a little triangle between those. I'm going to take my left arm, press my right knee out, I'm going to reach up towards the ceiling, push my hands apart from each other. So I'm getting some nice activation in my shoulders, getting a nice lengthening through my spine, and I'm externally rotating as I inhale, and as I exhale, I reach and dive my hand between my right arm and my right knee, keeping my left knee pushing up towards the side, hold for a second, and then reach back up again. If you do three to five reps like that, switch side to side, and it'll be a great warm up and also just a great maintenance drill to keep your mid back healthy and happy. As a chiropractor, I often get people asking me what kind of stretches or exercises can I do for, um, for posture? And this is an exercise that I like to borrow from the FRC world. It's called the inmate stretch. And this works the shoulders, it works the middle back. And uh, it really helps to kind of like you know, balance out some of that posture that we can develop where we're rolling forward. Especially when we bike. Cycling and running really tend to gravitate us towards this forward lean. So this really helps to correct it. You take your hands, you bring them to your lower back. Your elbows are up by your side and you radiate a little bit through the rest of your stomach and your belly by just pushing out a little bit. From here, keep my neck neutral, and I'm going to pull my hands and my elbows off of my low back together. So just sitting like this, I get a good stretch through the front of my shoulder, and I feel my thoracic spine coming into extension a little bit. One, hold like this for a couple seconds, and then I can either relax it, or I can take it to another level where I can pull my elbows back, hands back, straight the arms and then keeping the arms as close together as I possibly can and raise them up overhead, squeezing my shoulders together, palms face each other at the top and then from here bend my right elbow and my left elbow and then I'm going to do the exact
exact same thing on the way back down. Pull the elbows back, pull the hands off of the top part of the neck, straighten, and then swan dive all the way back to the starting position. So this is a great for the shoulders, middle back, even a little bit of your core too, because you're going to want to resist that tendency to flare your rib cage. Knitting your ribs and your hips together just help make this exercise a little bit more cost friendly. So cyclists and runners are notorious for getting really tight hips and there's lots of different ways that we can stretch the hip. Um, a really common thing that people do is they actually overstretch the front part of their hip by letting their back go into extension like this. So one of the biggest corrections I make to a lot of people's hip flexor stretching is to actually get them to stretch into the front part of their quad a little bit more. So, Take a shoulder stance and normal, you're normally diving like this. See how much my back is coming into the picture. I want to shorten the stance and keep my knee right underneath my hip. From here, I'm going to take my hip and in order to pretend there's a dial on the side of it, and this dial sticks my bum out a little bit, the dial this way kind of tucks it underneath. I'm going to focus on tucking my hip forward like I'm driving my right pocket towards the front part of the So from here, I already feel a bit of a stretch from the front part of my quad, and if I want to get a little bit more, I'm going to take my right arm, reach it up overhead, and then do a slight, very, very slight side bend to the right, to the left side, sorry. Just hold for about 30 to 45 seconds. Okay, back. hold hold that for a second. Okay, go back to that. And then right back. Nice and smooth control. Try to do your best to breathe through it. Breath is really, really important because if you can breathe through it, your body feels relaxed. It'll give you a little bit of length if you're hyperventilating through it. Your body looks at that as an attack. So you want to make sure that you can control your breath first and then work on improving your mobility. Hope you guys enjoyed those drills. Uh, this is going to be stuff that's going to help keep you healthy so you can train longer, so you can train stronger, be faster, and uh, just generally do better at your sport, whatever that is. So if you want to follow me on Instagram, check the link up here. If you want to subscribe to this channel, Click the link down here and uh, hope you guys enjoy.